hello hello and welcome to another video in today's video i want to give you guys a little bit more tips about some things that you should expect while you're at basic training and i really want to say that um, this video i decided to put together because i know it's very hard to envision the environment that you're going into if you've never been in an environment like this. So I'm gonna do my best every time I think of new ways to um, kind of paint the picture of how the environment would be, I'm gonna do my best to bring you guys the information because I know um, I left behind my family, okay? And you might be, um, my age you may be younger but you might have things that you're going to leave behind and you really want to know as much as you can what you're going into that is my hope that is my goal with these videos so while everything is still fresh on my mind like you guys know i have been gone for what i've been home for about a month now so still very fresh on my mind um, i still have friends two of my closest battle buddy friends are at AIT right now. So I still have, I'm still kind of within the circle. They're still keeping me abreast on what's going on. And I'm excited for them. I'm excited for you if you're starting your journey. Um, you guys know I gotta put my disclaimer in there, but today I have a different disclaimer. So before I, I had the notes for this video at the top of today and later on in the day, um, one of my battle buddies who actually was recycled sent me a text message, sent us a group text, text message with some like very bad news so bad like it, it's terrible news and I want to take this time to say um, I had a terrible experience at base training you guys know um, at this point yet I am not keeping my terrible experience from sharing experiences with you um, your experience will be whatever it's supposed to be I want to say that but if you are the person um, who really truly desires to be the change. I wanna let you know that you can still be that. You're gonna come across people from all walks of life, okay? You're gonna come across people who look like you, some who don't, some with different religious backgrounds, some with different cultural backgrounds, just different. The one thing that I can say to you is try your best to be a good person. You never know what's going to happen to these people. You don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know what's going to happen to these people um, in this environment or when you leave this environment. And the last thing you want to be is the person like the the drill sergeant who like tormented me while I was there the last thing you want to be is the person who is making someone's life miserable when they have embarked on this journey to change their life now I said that to say I believe that the reason that I went off the basic training it was complete okay I believe that the the reason that I went there um that I still got good fruit out of it. I'm able to sit here and give you guys this information and I would not otherwise be able to do this. So am I grateful that I went? Absolutely. Am I upset about how I was treated? I mean, in the moment I was, but now that I look back, I can give you perspective that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to give you. And for that, I'm grateful. So with all of that out of the way, I wanna say, be a good person. Even if you're just watching this video and you're not going off to the military, be a good person person to the people on your job to the people that you come up, come in contact with that you don't know the people in the grocery store the little old lady down the street if you were you know if you work with other people you work with children just try to be a good person you never know what someone's going through and you never know how life would end up you don't want to be the person causing harm to other people okay so without further ado let's get into today's so, video. before i give you the first one i also want to say that all of these things are going to be widely dependent upon the drill sergeants that are there but for the most part this is how most most of um, the batteries run and I can say that because when I went to Charlie we all kind of came together and talked about things and for the most part it's the same there might be slight differences but they still have um, rules that they have to abide by just a certain way that the military the army specifically does things you guys know I was at Fort Seal so this might be very specific to Fort Seal as well but I just want to give you guys these things all right so the first thing is I'm talking about basic training not so much Vessi if you're at Fort Seal we call it the Vessi Hall also known as reception this is the phone time for basic training so we got five minutes when we first got there and then on Sundays we got 30 minutes um, to talk on the phone um, for the most part like 
I kind of was keeping track and then not really keeping track just by looking at the time that I spent on the phone. For the most part, they gave us 30 minutes. So if you weren't like doodaling around, you're gonna get your full 30 minutes to talk to your family members. And you guys know I did go during like the holiday time. So they're very, very big on holidays. So any like major holiday that they would have to take off, you're probably going to get your phone. We got our phone for 30 minutes. At no point in time did we get our phone more than 30 minutes. But I do know, like, let's say um, holdovers or people who like, like, remember I told you guys they had the guy who was there. He was being um, held under investigation until he went off to AIT. There was days that he got his phone like literally all day. He had to sit outside. You're not allowed to take your phone up in the bay at any point in time. But um, there will be some instances where you get your phone longer periods of time than other people. Um, I witnessed people like let's say you had to do some business at home and you were you know, you weren't a troublemaker or something like that, you can go in and ask the drill sergeants and they'll let you use your phone. When it was time for me to chapter out, I wanted to call my husband and like um, ask him some information about banking and stuff like that and they let me use my phone. But for the most part, we got 30 minutes on Sundays. Now this does change because while I was at, while I was at um, Charlie, while I was chaptering out, they actually implemented a new rule across all Army basic training that Wednesday and Sunday was the two days. I talked to the girls, like my battle buddies, and they said they didn't ever get a Wednesday, but that was the rule. So 30 minutes, I believe there was one time that we got in trouble and we got like 15 minutes, but you're never, I wish I could say that, let me take that back. You're not supposed to not get phone time at all. We never not got phone time, but there was one time, like I said, we got 15 minutes taken off. And then when you first got there, you only got five minutes, okay? So you will get a chance to use your phone. You will get a chance to call your loved ones. I would say use your phone time very wisely. Don't talk to people who, if you talk to them in like your everyday life and they get on your nerves, you get off the phone, they have you feeling mad, they have you crying, just don't do all that, okay? It's a very stressful environment. And the last thing you wanna be doing is trying to clean up you know, a mess every time you get off the phone on Sunday or whenever you get your phone, okay? Also, the time does vary. So time isn't really like, like a set in stone time they give you your phone. Um, Sometimes we got the phone like lunchtime. It was really never before lunchtime that we got our phone. But sometimes we got it like right after lunchtime and then sometimes we got it like six o'clock. I remember on Thanksgiving, I think I called home at like seven. They don't usually wait till too late in the day, but it just depends on how many drill sergeants are there and things like that. So don't really plan on getting it at the same time every single time you get it, but just know for the most part, you will get your phone because they're really big on you being able to communicate with your family. I did mention to you guys in the What to Pack video, make sure you have those earbuds. They're like, don't have to be charged. Like the regular, like, you know, that you can plug directly into your phone because charging your phone is not their priority. Now they charged our phones. Like my battery made sure to charge the phones, but I heard from other girls that their batteries didn't do that. I also bought a battery pack. I have all that stuff linked in my Amazon storefront and I'll put it in the description bar. Um, that battery pack was the GOAT. Like literally I charged it during holiday block leave and I had the same charge when I left, when I chaptered out. I didn't use it that often, but it not only held a charge, but I was able to let other people use it. And it was like, I think I left with it on like 60% from 100%. So it was really good. It was a really good battery pack. I would highly suggest one of those. And then make sure that the charger that's in your bag actually works. Because when they do go and plug it up, like you want your phone to be charging. Nobody's about to sit there and be wiggling around your phone and doing a little, like doing a Jimmy rig, the nigga rig, okay, on your phone. Nobody's about to do that. So just make sure that your charger works. If you have to put in two, put in two because sometimes people still just saying, okay? So make sure you got those headphones. Um, you could bring your Bluetooth ones, but don't, don't count on being able to charge it. I want you to be able to talk to your family and not be like fumbling around the bag, you know? And that's another thing. So. All of our electronics were in like, imagine like a gallon freezer bag. If you wanna go ahead and put your stuff in the gallon freezer bag before you go, that's cool. I would suggest that you like put the headphones separate so they're not all wound up. Cause while they were talking, like 
you know, while we were, they were giving the instructions for our phones and stuff like that, I literally had to every single time unravel my headphones. So if you waited until they were done talking, that would be taking away time that you could talk on the phone. So just make sure you have everything organized. So like I said, you can use your full 30 minutes to talk to those that you love okay so let's move on to the so next this thing. next one um i know people want to know this do you get like downtime or are you always being yelled at no you're not always being yelled at like whenever the drill sergeants are not around it's really downtime and what that looks like is personal time so you we had to get a mandatory hour of personal time every single day Sometimes that personal time seemed like they did take away from my hour, but for the most part, we got an hour. Use this time wisely, okay? Um, use it wisely. Like, schedule out your showers, have your locker and stuff organized so that when personal time is there, you can, you know, you can get in your shower. Well, let, let me take that back, because sometimes, it depends on a drill sergeant, they will, like, separate personal time and shower time. Like, they're not always the same. Like, sometimes... They'll let you know when you can shower, but just use your time wisely. If they let you know, if they say that you can shower, shower and then do your personal time. And I will say the thing that helped me most with personal time and just showering and just time management in general is making sure that my locker was clean and that I knew where stuff was. Because they're gonna send you guys upstairs, hopefully you not on the fourth bay, but we were in the fourth, fourth floor. So they're gonna send you to the bay a lot to get things to change and all this kind of stuff so just make sure you have things organized make sure you know where things are we had like a little grid on the back of the door to let you know where things go i didn't really use that grid but i made sure that my locker was clean so make sure your locker is clean that's the thing that helped me the most okay so yes to answer that little question you do get personal time you get one hour and let's say so sometimes the drill sergeants will send you upstairs and you don't like have to, you don't have to do, you don't have to do anything. They just say, don't go to sleep, okay? If you're the type of person who's gonna fall asleep anyway, you're gonna learn how to do that. But yes, they send you upstairs sometimes, just depending on the drill sergeant. Some of them will talk literally from sun up to sun sundown. They'll be giving like little tutorials and things. And the other drill sergeant will just send you to the bay and then see you the next day. I will say Saturdays and Sundays though, they're definitely more chill. Um, like I said, depends on your drill sergeants. Some drill sergeants, um, like, I don't want to say, like, did, like, kind of smoke sessions or just, like, training sessions on the weekends. Sundays, they're really not allowed to do too much, so it wasn't mandatory. Like, I remember one of the drill sergeants set up, like, a little run day on Sunday, and you could volunteer to go running to just get better with your run time, which was nice if you wanted to do that. I would highly suggest taking some time to just, like, chill out. If you go to services... I did not go to services, uh, religious services, because it took away from my personal time, and we really didn't get much like downtime. Sundays, it depends on your, um, it depends on your laundry days and stuff like that. But Sundays was our laundry day. I'll get to that here in a second, a little bit more about it. But just use your personal time wisely. But you do get personal time, okay? Mainly, you get one hour. Like I said, you get one hour. Um, every day and then Sundays definitely you get a lot of personal time. All right, so the next thing is washing clothes. Now, if you are at Fort Seal and you go to reception, how the washer and dryer is inside of the bay, it's not like that at the battery, okay? The washer is like across the drill pad at the battery. So it's completely different. You don't have the luxury. I loved reception for this reason. You literally could and in Charlie too, when I trapped it out, you can literally do laundry every single day. So you don't have to worry about having enough clothes, having enough panties and stuff like that. You could just wash clothes every day. You can't do that at the battery. And you're like, like imagine there are 60 girls, you gotta be wise like when it's time for you to go to do your laundry. But make sure that you're doing your laundry. I went during the winter cycle and you know you have, you have less winter PTs unless you buy extra than you do summer PTs. So what I end up having to do because I, I very seldom was able to wash the winter PTs unless I went to religious service. But like I just mentioned, I didn't go to religious services. I think I went like once or twice. I didn't always go to religious services because it cut into my personal time. Okay, like I could sit in the bay and read my own Bible, okay, without the madness. So I'm just, that's just what I did. I'm not saying that's what you should do. That's just what I did. Um, because like I said, I wanted my personal time. 
but that was the only time when I was in my full OCPs on a Sunday that I was actually able to wash the winter PTs because that's when we wore the winter PTs. So if you're going to do a winter cycle, it might be harder to wash the winter PTs, okay? So what I did was whenever I wore them, I would take a warm washcloth and I would like wash it in the sink and then I would hang it up inside of my locker so that the next time I had to wear it, it was ready to go. So I didn't always get to like machine wash it, but I did make sure that it was washed. Another thing is just make sure that you have enough panties. I showed you guys the packing list already. Make sure you have like, I would say like seven pairs of panties so that you can have like some for every day. And maybe you could bring a little more, more is probably better. Um, but just in case you can't get to the washer as frequently, you're not wearing dirty clothes because we don't wanna do that, okay? No. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is writing letters. Um, I would highly suggest writing letters. Like I said, you get 30 minutes to talk on the phone. So for me, how I got like the most of my conversation out so I could let my husband know exactly kind of what was going on in detail in a way that I couldn't do in 30 minutes because I would have to recall it all. I made sure to write letters every night. And like I said, I would highly suggest that you do the same. Um, especially if you have multiple people to talk to and you can't talk to them all, just so they can, you know, people that you care about at least, just so they don't know what's going on. Um, I would write my letters at night. So I did not use my personal time to write letters. Um, I didn't use shower time to write letters. I use Sundays sometimes, but mainly, like I said, at the end of the night, that first hour when everyone laid down, because most of the time people are still in there talking, I just went ahead and started writing my letters. One reason was because um, I found out very early on that they will read your letters. So if they're doing like a health and wellness inspection, and you leave your letter out, and your letter is something foul, something funky, kind of being read, okay? So I didn't like that. I didn't want none of my stuff being read. So between, like I said, those night hours and them taking the mail in the morning, that's when I turned my letter in, but I had everything ready to go. So I showed you guys, like I said in that other video, I basically had like a little folder, like just, just think of a little folder, a little plastic folder with my stamps in it, with paper in it, with the clipboard in it. That way I was able to just pull this little board out and just start writing. Another, that's another part of keeping everything organized so I didn't have to be fumbling through my locker. And this is another thing that I had in my locker. So this is probably gonna be a little blinding, very bright light. I actually had this in my locker and I took some of the like red masking tape that they had and I taped it up in my locker. So I had like a little closet light in my locker. This will also be good if you wanna read, but to be honest with you, this is kind of too bright. A lot of people didn't use the red light that's on that green flashlight that we got. Um, I bought one from the PX that was like, it was smaller and it was more like a little lantern. It was better for reading. Or you could also bring something like this, which is a book light. Hold on, let me see if I can turn it on. Might be, oh, let me see. Girl, I don't even gotta turn it on. I didn't end up using it, I was using a lantern. So it looks like you just flick it this way. There you go, so a little book light like this. Still, this is kind of bright because you have to keep in mind that there are other people around you want to be courteous. The red light is probably the best, but I absolutely like, remember I told you we had full battle rattle for um, fire guard and getting dressed for your fire guard shift and all that kind of stuff. This thing was the goat, okay? And I slept with my little flashlight underneath my pillow and most mornings when I got up, people were saying, Ida Bird, can you shine that light over here, okay? So that's just a little tip. Like I said, I wrote my letters at nighttime because it worked best and I wanted to, I didn't want my stuff being read. I wanted some peace and quiet. And even though people are still talking, it's still a lot more peaceful than like other times, okay? So yes, um, I would highly suggest doing that. And it could be like a little therapy session too. Like it could be like your little journal journaling. You don't necessarily have to be writing a letter in case you don't have someone to send a letter to, don't feel bad. You can write letters to yourself so you know, you know, you can recount this time in your life as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next. Thing. Here's another just little tip thing. Um, I took a sheet protector, so like a normal, you know, like you put in your binder in high school, the little things, the little paper inside, sheet protector. I had a sheet protector and I would keep everything that I need with me in there at all times, like the stuff that was mandatory, I would keep it inside the sheet protector. So one of the things was um, our notes. They gave us notes that had like the Soldier's Creed and uh, ranks, all that kind of stuff. They gave us those notes, I put it inside. If you have a profile, which I had a profile, put it inside. You got a shaving profile, anything. Any profile you have, 
keep it on your person all the time it's a part of your uniform another thing that i did is put my cac inside of there because that's part of your uniform another thing i did was put my bank card in there because you never know when you're going to get a chance to go to the px and it's not very frequent that you get a chance to go to the px if i'm completely honest with you once you leave reception you're not going to go that much so especially not for us because we like we got holiday block leave so they felt like we should have everything that we need. So I put all those things inside there. Another thing that I did, kept on my person at all time was pads. I'm gonna do a full video for you guys about period and basic training. Be looking out for that, it's gonna come up soon. I put lotion and hand sanitizer inside my bag. A lot of the time, especially when we're in the field, they did not have hand sanitizer and they did not have a place for you to wash your hands. And a lot of people got sick, okay? A lot of people were getting sick. And there's a reason why, because our hands were dirty. Okay, so definitely hand sanitizer. And because it was cold, and because even when it's not cold, I always have on some kind of lip gloss, I put lip balm, okay? So let's move on to the well, next thing. Before we move on to the next thing, that sounds like a lot of stuff, but the OCPs have so many pockets on it, you'll have more than enough room to put all, I mean, you're gonna have at least like 10 pockets. Even your OCP cap, has a pocket in it like you have enough space to put pockets on and that's the kind of stuff that i had on me at all times but at some point i had the little flashlight that i'm talking about like i had all kind of stuff on me they have so many pockets so many pockets okay so let's move on to that so this is the last one and probably you know it's probably a little important or whatever uh depending on what home looks like um money okay you don't need to spend a lot of money. If you get everything that you need, you come there with most of the things you need. The only thing that you really have to brush up on is probably like washing powder. I mean, if you get recycled, you're probably gonna have to brush up on things a, a little bit more, washing powder um, and pads, things like that. That's really the only two things that you really need if you come with everything that you need. And I told you guys the things that you need to come with, you really don't need to be spending money in the PX. And I'm saying that because the PX is hot like high high like you think the prices are high outside in the real world right now go ahead and times that by two the px stuff is high so just come what you need you don't need to be spending your money there um you don't need to be spending money really while you're at basic training at all like don't don't spend all your coins because you're going to get a chance to leave and you want to have your coins with you okay and if you get chaptered out or something like that you want to have some money you don't want to be spend all your money at basic training on a bunch of nothing um one thing i would say though so let's say you have bills at home make sure that you wrote all that stuff down so that you're able to remember it because you know, things slip your mind when you're at basic training. And I was so blessed to have my husband here at home taking care of all the bills and stuff. But to be honest with you, I don't know if I could have thought of all those things. So make sure that you write it down. That way you're keeping up with your bills, the things that you need. But if you have like subscriptions and stuff like that, and you're not reserved or National Guard, and you're not gonna need them, I will go ahead and cancel them, okay? And another thing you could do is let as many companies as you can let them know that you're going to basic training. So your credit card companies, you know, um, the leasing office, if you're coming back home, let, let as many people as possible know. So they're not trying to reach out to you and you're creating unnecessary debts and confusion amongst, you know, the companies, the bill companies, okay? You don't want to come back to no confusion because you just don't want to. So let as many people know. And then the people who you don't need to let know, you actually want to pay because you want to keep it, write it down and have it, you, that's another thing you can put with you on your OCP. You put inside that sheet protection you have it with you at all times, okay? So I hope this was helpful. It was just a little something I put together, just extra little things. Um, like I said, I want to paint a, as good of picture as I can as to what the experience is like. As always, if you have a question, ask a question and I'll see you in the next video.